is right inside of here. It, it gives you all the setup procedures. You can activate the camera, log into your Moultrie mobile account, you know, download the app, activate device. I'm gonna walk you through that on the app. All right, guys, <clears throat> in today's video, well, let me introduce myself. Captain Jake Wildman Warehouse. Um, I do hunting, a lot of hunting and fishing videos. I'd appreciate it if you, if you, if you like the video to subscribe. Maybe if you like the video, click like. Um, today, what I'm gonna do is talk about these Moultrie cameras, specifically the Delta, the one that just come out, the brand new cellular camera. I'm gonna talk about how to set it up from scratch, like right out of the box, this is everything it comes with, the preferred batteries you use, uh, the preferred SD cards to use, and then actually how to set it up in the Moultrie app on your, your device, this is an iPad. I mean, I'm gonna use an iPad because it's a little bit bigger, you might be able to see it better, but that little, the Moultrie app, I'm going to talk about how to use it. We use it for a security camera, as you can see here. We set it up at our gate or our house, uh, our, our lake house, and uh, and use it to watch, you know, people come in and out. It has a real high-definition camera, so you can catch license plates pretty clear. You can hide off in the bush, and it actually texts you every time it gets a message if you set it up that way. So it's really good for security. It's also really great for if you can't go check your cameras very often or you want to set them somewhere where you don't want to constantly be bothering the place. Uh, we used them all last season. It even helped us determine where we would go into the woods at because some days we wake up, we'd have our coffee, and we'd get ready to go to a hunt spot, and we'd already be getting pictures of the target buck before we got there. And so the last thing we wanted to do is go to our area that we're hunting and push that deer out of that area. So we would just regroup and, and find a new place to go because, you know, it, it's no good to... Uh, to scare your deer out of your your area on your way in for the hunt because you basically you're just you're not going to see anything and you're going to get a false indication of what's what's going on there i love these cameras it's a real time saver it's a real decision maker and uh they've been reliable so far we kind of swapped over uh to the Mul the moultrie last year and i really kind of love them um before these things come out uh having a cellular camera was a lot of trouble it was very complicated with the setup process and a lot of hassle. This thing, it's as simple as pulling it out of the box, you open it up, uh, this little this little barcode right here, if you can see that barcode, you scan that in the app, and then it gives you prompts. You walk through, you walk through the prompts, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna set the camera up, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you how to walk through these prompts. And it's just gonna ask you how you wanna set the data plan up, you know, how many cameras you're gonna have, is gonna depend on, you know, what kind of you know, service you want, how many pictures you expect to get, and just how often you want it to talk to you. And I'm going to talk about a few of the things that we learned about uh, the use of them last year, just as far as like battery usage, you know, and there's a few different ways you can save on your battery by not having them send you the messages as often. So if, if that's something you're interested in, please stay tuned. I'm going to go through it thoroughly, so this is going to be a long video, but I would say overall, if you're just looking for an opinion, these cameras are great. Uh, this one was a hundred bucks. I'm just gonna drop a, an, an affiliate link to my Amazon uh, account to where you can go. I'll get like a small commission. If you buy from Amazon, it won't cost you any more and it'll help give me a little kickback. I'm not sponsored. I just, uh, I try to, you know, feature these products because we use them a lot. And I, I love those videos that I can go and check out online that tell me about a product before I purchase it. Just, uh, I'm just doing this for everybody out there that's just trying to make a decision on whether they want to go cellular cameras or they want to just keep going in the woods and, and checking the cameras, uh, you know. I just feel like you stir it up a lot when you go in there every three, four days and check them. Or your buddy's going to check your camera chips and then you don't know if he's deleting the good ones and telling you there's nothing there or what. And I mean, that goes on. I don't know if you guys realize that your buddy will delete the big bucks before he sends you pictures. And they'll be like, man, ain't really ain't nothing going on, man. You know what I mean? Maybe some pigs, you know. But really doesn't do donkey and he's just uh and he knows you know what i'm saying so having them come to your phone and the great thing about it is you can share your login with your friends or your hunting buddies and uh you know you can have cameras all over the state or really all over the country and you can share your your login with your whole member your whole hunting club really if you wanted to and everybody can see you know what's going on you might have a camera and you're not going to tell them where it's at uh but it's gonna click and send pictures and I'm, I'm not sure how the GPS is gonna work on this thing. So as I get into these things and as I learn, it's got a built-in GPS, it might tell you where it's at all the time or you might be able to turn that feature off. 
you can do everything inside the app. You can t you know tell it how often you want it to send you pictures, the, the definition of the pictures. If you want it to send you pictures of just bucks, or uh, and it's going to always upload low quality image just to save the data. But if you want to request a high definition picture, you just click on a button there, and it's going to send that high definition picture into you. Everything that you want to know about these cameras is right inside of here. It, it gives you all the set of procedures. You Let's talk about the batteries for a second. So Energizer batteries, um, they sell Moultrie batteries. I've used those, they're great. I've used Energizer batteries, they're great. Sometimes it's just not easy to get those quick. You can order the Moultrie on Amazon. I'm sure lots of other places. I'll leave a link to the Moultrie batteries in here. But Moultrie recommends a lithium, lithium ion battery for this thing. Lithium ion batteries are real expensive, up to like $2 a battery sometimes. These energizers work fine. I feel like if I can get these for 50 cents a piece and I and I can, you know, only use twice as many, I'm still saving money by using these instead of using those expensive lithium ion. I'm gonna set my camera to send me pictures three times a day instead of every time it takes a picture so it's not constantly fighting the signal. This antenna right here comes in the package separately. Make sure you uh, don't throw the package away with this installed. This is going to screw right into the top of this little receiver right here. It's really easy to install. And then once you get it screwed all the way in, you can, uh, you know, you can actually bend the antenna a little bit to fold it out, maybe out from underneath a, a branch or something, and get it pointed in a direction. And you could kind of monitor on your cellular device while you're in the field, and it's going to tell you the actual cellular. Uh, signal the camera's receiving while you're in the field. It tells you the cellular signal, tells you the battery, and it's going to tell you uh, your SD card remaining storage capacity. And here uh, you can see that I've already got everything installed. I've got this SD card. Now it actually recommends um, on the back of the the inside of the box here, it recommends you know you don't use these ultra uh, cards. Let's see SD cards I read that somewhere. Okay, so it do not use SDXC cards, micro mini cards, or ultra capacity or high speed cards. So I bought this Ultra Plus. I didn't really do all this research before I bought it. Um, I'm sure it'll work just fine. Um, it might be slower. I don't know all the reasons why they recommend, but typically we've always just used those regular standard blue SD cards for this. So they ask you to format the SD card and that's something you're going to do inside the app so let me walk through how to actually scan a new unit so uh, devices right here and the reason I'm not doing picture in picture here is because I'm actually going to show you how easy it is to scan now I want to activate a device scan let's see if I can scan it so this scan little scan prompt is going to ask me oh there I grabbed it Okay, well, it didn't find that serial number. No problem, serial number's right here. So I'm gonna go through and type in my serial number. Device. Activation successful. Every six hours is what it recommends. I'm gonna do it right now. Just because I want to, uh, I want to actually see if lithium batteries recommended. Your camera takes better night photos with lithium batteries are installed. They actually, have the link you can click. They're making uh, lithium batteries available to you at MoultrieFeeders.com at a wholesale price. So we'll check out that link and see if they actually offer them at a wholesale price. We'll cross-check it against Amazon's price for the same batteries and see what's happening there. Um, yeah, it's giving me these things. Okay, so now it's been activated and it was activated before it was ever turned on. So now let's turn it on. I held the I held the on button on down for a little while. This is the first time I've turned this camera on, so you're seeing the setup process real time. It's really easy. Um, you don't have to put in any kind of like SD card, uh, 
uh, you don't have to put in like an AT&T chip or anything like that. It just, you know, it asks you uh, your information when you set up your Moultrie account. And this camera is an AT&T camera. You want to make sure you get the Verizon or the AT&T uh, camera. See, this one says AT&T right here. Make sure the box uses your uh, your, your correct cell, cellular plan provider, okay? Don't uh, just assume it's the right one. You'll be uh, frustrated with with me and them if you get the wrong camera. So AT&T, that's what I use. They got Verizon or AT&T. Um, so it's trying to get a signal and talk to the server. Oop, just blinked green. So now it's talking. So now let's go into devices and Moultrie Delta. It's saying low everything right now, but it's still trying to figure it out. Settings. So it's still trying to get its information. Motion freezes, one. Format SD card. Let's go ahead and format that SD card. So I'll click that and then I'm gonna go up here and go to save. Camera settings successfully updated. Okay, what I've re what I've learned with this is sometimes you go and save it and then you'll check back later and it'll be the way it was before you change the settings and saved it. So it doesn't always save correctly. It's now it's doing some sort of a thing. It's probably doing some sort of an update it probably tells us about this um, okay there it went green again okay so you should see a light sequence start after 15 second delay and SD for you know card format is complete LEDs indicate camera status and server connection once connected to Moultrie mobile all lights will turn off and camera will enter capture mode uh oh 18, let's see, it says 19 minutes, 18 minutes and eight seconds. We've got a good green and then everything just turned off. So that means it got a connection with a server and now it's waiting for motion. Okay, so it sensed the motion and now it turned itself back on to upload the picture. So let's see how long it takes to get a picture after it after it gets a signal. Okay, so it turned itself back off now. So I think it's it's it sent a signal to the Moultrie app, and there it goes. So that was just me waving my hand in front of it. Obviously, you want a better picture than that. That's out of the box, batteries in, SD card in, formatting the SD card, and your first picture within 20 minutes of opening the box. And that's thing. these things can be shipped to your house. You wanna set them all up before you go into the woods the first time, test them all out. And if you're gonna store them for a while, go ahead and pull the batteries back out of them so it's not just slowly uh, grabbing it. Um, but but I would say to have everything ready to go when you go in the woods, everything attached, including this, you know, put, go ahead and install this in the camera, wrap it around the camera a bunch of times and attach it back to itself, put it in your hunting bag. So whenever you go to the tree, all you're doing is putting the camera straight to the tree and hitting the on button. Go ahead and go into settings and set it up how you want to set it up to, 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 to upload pictures every six hours or every how often. But make sure you're ready to go with your cameras when you go in the woods so you're not out there get eat up by mosquitoes and uh and have them have them ready to go um i love these cameras i'll, I'll go to uh i'll go to a different state and hunt and i'll put them out when i get there when i first show up I'll, I'll do a scouting run and i'll drop these pictures these cameras in the woods on while i'm scouting and i'll drop pins in, in onyx hunt i have the app onx hunt you can download that on the app store i highly recommend that app I haven't messed with these GPS enabled deltas yet to see how they're going to locate themselves. Another thing is, is if you're depending on the delta to tell you where it's at, it will depend on if the batteries have died yet. And so if you don't get to get back to your cameras for whatever reason, or your batteries just die fast, and then it's not sending you a signal, then you're dealing with not being able to find your camera. So I definitely have at least one way 
additional to the GPS inside here if that's even going to be dependable. We'll look into that further once we get these cameras set up in the woods. But let's check it out right now while we've got a, we know we've, and that's why this is so great for security purposes. Because you can set this thing up to where it actually sends you notifications um, in your settings. And then you can delete them that easily. Delete those two pictures, yes. But in your settings, you can say notifications and you can actually allow it depending on uh, what your preferences are. It will send you notifications to your phone and you'll actually, uh, you can actually get notifications if you get a buck, a, a, a turkey, a person, or a vehicle. That's why it's great for security because you can actually say I want to get an, a text message anytime it, it sends a person, you know, it senses a person. And the best part about these new Deltas versus the old version is this GPS thing actually does work after using it a little bit. See those, those uh, M, M marks at my house? So if the camera gets stolen and it still has juice in the batteries, it's going to tell you exactly where the thieves are. You can set it to a specific, you know, ringtone or whatever. But if, if you got to set up for security and somebody drives past your, your house or your driveway to your camp, you want a good picture of their uh, license plate and see that's just a low resolution image, okay? So let's just say that I wanted to download high resolution image. And uh, so I just requested a high resolution image for that picture because I want to actually get a picture of that license plate. And that's probably you know two megapixels or something, but it'll come in at 20 megapixels, and you can have very a very high definition picture. Now that camera's offline, so it's not going to upload right now. That one's in, in my in my buddy's hunting bag, so it's not going to upload that picture right now. But the next time it the next time it gets turned on, it'll talk, and it will send me a high definition resolution picture. Now that's uh, that's what it looks like now. So let's see. Should, should get a good picture there. Let's see how long it takes from the time that you actually took the picture until until it uploads it in the system. And so, man, you know, I just, I, I like these cameras a lot. And, and it's fun because, you know, you can't always be in the woods and, and some people are gonna say, I like to be surprised. Hey, good. I like to be surprised when I'm drinking coffee at the house that I got another big buck on the place. And, you know, that buck might be there for a week or two and then move out during the rut. You might have a small window to get a chance at that particular buck. And if you don't know, you don't know. So this is just more information. You're not having to do as much scouting. Basically, you're sitting in the tree as long as this camera's in that tree. You could be sitting in six different trees in six different states and getting pictures. And it's like being... So you could say that it, it takes away from it, but to me, it does nothing but add to it. Because when me and my buddy Tyler are sitting in the camp, or we're sitting at our house, or maybe we're you know hanging out with the women at a birthday party with the kids, and we get a picture of a buck, man, it's just, it takes you to the woods. It takes you there, and it's just fun, man. It's just, it's cool. So there's that picture. Um, it's a good picture, and that's straight out the box. That's how easy these things are to set up, and that's why I love them. If you love this uh, video, click like, check out the link in the description, buy from that link, it'll really help me out. I'm trying to do this full time, and I appreciate you guys watching. I hope it helped you make your decision. Um, you could pause it, read this package here. Read the package there. Pause it and read this. And I'll put more information to this video if I get out in the woods and I discover something else. Me and Tyler are going to go set these cameras up in a couple of days. So this is me getting them all, getting them all ready to, to put together. So when we go to the woods, um, we're, we're prepared. Anyhow, I'll take you guys to the woods with me when I go, you know, set the cameras out and we start getting pictures of bucks. Hopefully, same day. And I'm going to teach you guys a trick how to get big pictures of bucks as soon as you put the cameras out, instead of having to wait a week or two, or if you can't put them on a corn feeder or something, you know, where to put the cameras out to where you get consistent pictures. Because 
Um, a lot of us can't spend all our, our money on corn. It's ten dollars a bag this year, and so you know the deer were there long before we started putting bags of corn there. So you got to know where the deer are traveling, and the deer don't always travel the same areas throughout the year. So as the seasons change, don't think that since you quit getting pictures on the camera, the deer are gone. They've just moved to a different pattern because the food sources is changing throughout the year. Early season, uh, a lot of your white oaks are gonna be dropping acorns. They're still gonna be browsing on a lot of stuff left over from the summertime. As you move into the colder months, you know, some of the only you know food sources that are gonna be left are gonna be those nut all oaks, and then they're gonna be still grazing on some of the, you know, the winter grasses and stuff like that. And uh, you're gonna end up doing a lot of uh, finding the main highways between their food source and their bedding areas because they're going to be bedding, they're going to be going to eat in fields where the sun can get to the ground and there's a lot of growth on the ground because they've eaten up a lot of the free the free range foliage uh you know up to their head height through in the woods and it's shaded and they're going to hit those uh fields to eat at night and so you're going to want to figure out where they're bedding at and where they're feeding at in the evenings um because most deer are going to not want to be in the open during the day and that's why they wait and feed at night because the moon's out they can see they see much better than we can at night. So they just feel like safer at night eating in the fields. So they'll wait until the evening to go to the fields. You guys already know this. But you find out their main pathways to get to those fields and you set up 100, 150 yards into the woods where they travel on the way to those fields. And they're gonna be traveling past the feeder oaks that are still dropping a few acres. They're gonna be traveling past those areas, maybe on ridges, uh, maybe across ridges and sloughs. Uh, they want to catch, uh, they w and preferably on the downwind side of the food plot or the field because they're also wanting to scent check the area. Any kind of, anytime they want to come in to feed, they're trying to scent check the area on their way in. So they might go hang out downwind of a, of a food source 100 yards or 150 yards and it, and, they, and it look like to you when you're in the woods that they're just feeding around and grazing around and maybe it's a doe with a couple of yearlings and they're just hopping around and grazing around. But when, truthfully, they are downwind of that food plot, the mom's keeping the kids occupied, waiting outside that area where she knows there's food until dark, but she's also scent checking the area. That's why, that's why those does work their way upwind is when they're going to try to feed, and they try to follow their same path downwind but to go back to a bedding area because it's a secure path that they've kind of already checked, and they're, they're following that wind down. Um, you know, a lot of things we kind of learn through the years and we take for granted as, uh, as, as hunters and a lot of people just, uh, they have to learn it through trial and error and, um, there's a lot of guys that know a lot more than me about it. Um, I'm, I'm not very good of a bow hunter. I just love it a lot. Um, so anyways, let me go turn that camera off, finish setting these two up and I'll see you guys in the woods. All right, how long does it take to set these cameras up straight out of the box? That's the question. So I've never opened it before. How long is it gonna take me to get this thing on a tree? If you wanna see the setup detailed, you can go to the video in that link right there. And, um, Check it out. This video is not going to be detailed. This is going to be, if you buy one, how long is it going to take you to get it working? So this is kind of like me doing it as fast as I can. Now when when I scanned it last time in the in the, in the like detailed video I did, it didn't scan in. So I had to enter the serial number and ID of the camera manually and that was probably the thing that took the longest setting it up so if I don't have to do that especially that I can get this camera set up in less than five minutes and clicking and if it takes me longer than that it's going to be because like doing the whole setup process. So 
So now, opening my Moultrie app, I gotta find it. Okay, the camera turned on. So, opening my Moultrie app, here it is. I'm gonna scan this code right here inside this thing. Devices, activate, scan. Come on, the last one will give me trouble. See, see how this one does. Yes! Next. Next. Charge my wife's credit card. Purchase. I just did the unlimited Pro Series plan, added a camera, monthly price, eight bucks per camera. Activation successful. I wanted to upload pictures as taken. Okay. And it's still trying to get the server. But I've already done everything to set this camera up. And I'm looking at two and a half, two minutes and 43 seconds right there. The camera's still talking, but that's as long as it takes you to, to set this camera up to shoot. Uh, I can take this thing, and put the uh, strap on it, which is what I'm gonna do right now, while it does its last little bit of loading and everything. And I bet you that by the time I get the strap on this camera, it's clicking. So literally, less than five minutes to set this camera up. Now I don't know if you can set your old school camera up any faster than that. I put the flat part against the tree. So what's going through this like little orange sequence right here. And I might as well go ahead and format the SD card. Details, settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and format the SD card. Save. Save. So that's it. Under five minutes, you set this camera up, throw it on a tree, you click it. A lot easier than those old style cameras. I, I bought one, or I didn't buy one, I had it given to me. And I'll try to get that plan and all that stuff. and. It was just, it wasn't even worth it. Set up. Set up in less than three minutes. It's still talking right now, talking to the server and everything. And I'm still fighting this strap, so it's still winning. Okay, it's on, it's clicking. It just took its first picture. I just saw the, the lights go off for a second. And, and I think that it's, uploading the camera now because these two bottom green lights come on when it's uploading and I bet you that it's searching for the ser server all right it's, it's done and I think it just sent me a picture Farm ducks. I like mallards and wood ducks. Stop! <laughs> Dang, man. Go away. Alright, now it took a picture. Now it's trying to send it to me. I'm going to refresh it. I'm, that's what I'm doing here. I'm refreshing this. Here it goes. First picture. Six minutes and 40 seconds. From, from opening the package to receiving your first picture on the thing. Six minutes. It's pretty good if you ask me. So now I'm going to take these middle four batteries out. And while, I, while I'm taking the middle four out is because I don't want it to drain the batteries while I've got it sitting in my bag or whatever. So, then, then what I do is this. This is how I store the cameras between uh, spots. That way you can throw this in your Jeep or your hunting truck or your four-wheeler basket 
everything you need. Uh, obviously, I think make sure your batteries. But I don't know if these are gonna sit in my bag for a couple of days or a couple of months. So I want to. I don't want to leave all the batteries in. That's it. Ready to go. Six minutes and forty seconds. Total eight minutes to get it ready to throw you back. 